Hello guys, good evening. Yeah, so where were we in the last class? So we are done with Bohr's model, right? Questions also we have discussed. Okay. Okay. Now in this two, three points, just you write down notes here. Write down the first point, one note. As we go away from the nucleus, As we go away from the nucleus, the total energy of electron of electron increases, the total energy of electron increases increases means what? The energy in first orbit E1 is lesser than the energy in the second orbit E2, E3, E4 and so on it goes. As we go away from the nucleus, the total energy of the electron increases. Correct? So we know the formula of energy that is En, En is directly proportional to Z squared by N squared. This we have discussed. So at infinity, the energy is what? E infinity. The energy is directly proportional to 1 by this by 0. And hence at infinity the energy becomes 0 for an electron. So we can say at infinity the electron is no longer. It means since there is no energy it becomes 0. It means the electron is no longer a part of the atom. It is free from the atom. Okay. This has also been observed. Next point you write down. The difference in energy in the consecutive levels E2 minus E1 is greater than E3 minus E2. This is greater than E4 minus E3 and so on. Copy this down and this is again I am coming.
Okay. So this is the two terms relation you must uh, you know keep in mind. It's important. Okay. Now the next uh, term. I think we have discussed some questions also on this. Yes or no? Regarding radius, velocity, energy. Yeah, some questions we have discussed. It's simple answer. There's nothing much to, much to explain over here. You find out energy in first orbit, E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, you find out. When you find out the difference between the two, like this E2 minus E1, E3 minus E2, and so on, you'll find out this order. Okay, means the difference between the first and second energy level is maximum. The energy difference is maximum over here and it decreases as we go away from the loop. This is what we observe when you find out the energy. Got it, Ansh? Okay, now the next one, you write down the heading. The calculation of, there's a constant, we call it as Rydberg constant, write down. Did you try the assignment I have shared? Rydberg constant. If you do not solve assignment, there's no point of attending class simply, I'm telling you all. Okay, so whether you can do Half of the assignment, you must do it. Don't come simply for the class. Okay, this won't help you at all. And once the things piled up, okay, you won't get time later on to solve those questions again. Yeah, yeah, understood, Gurman. We have just started, right? So obviously, you will get some questions which you which we haven't done in the class till now, right? But don't worry with that. Whatever is possible, you do that. Like this one that you are talking about, Bama, Silicon, or we'll discuss it today. And then you can try it again. So if, if, if you get some questions which we haven't done in the class, you can leave that simply. And later on when we discuss it, you can do that again. Okay? Right. So you must solve the assignment, all of you. Okay? Uh, if I do not ask every day, it doesn't mean that you don't have to do that. Okay? It is understood that you are attempting, you are attending the class, and then you are attempting the assignment. That is what the purpose. We share assignment every after every class. Okay? It is understood between me and you. Correct? So calculation of Rydberg constant. Okay? So what is Rydberg constant? That means it is a constant term basically. Suppose if you have to find out the change in energy, delta E. So delta E would be what? It is E2 minus E1. Right, E2 minus E1 between second and first orbit. Any two orbit we can take. Delta E would be this. Delta E is positive or negative? Delta E is positive or negative? Positive. Why? Because why? Because E2 minus E1, E2 is greater than E1, right? So E2 minus E1 is positive. Just now we have discussed. Okay. Now you see, we have two different, uh, you know, uh, energy level. Suppose is the energy level we have, right? So all of you are now very comfortable with it that this is one energy level has certain amount of energy. This energy level has certain amount of energy. Similarly, we have n number of energy levels has different different amount of energy. So this energy here, it is more than the energy present in this orbit over here. Okay. So what happens if electron jumps from higher to lower energy level. 
what happens over here if it is jumps like this then there will be some amount of radiation comes out from this because it is higher energy level it is lower energy level when it comes from high to low then the difference of this energy this is delta e this energy difference must come out in this process then only the electron comes from here to here further it comes down again energy releases further comes down again energy releases right so i'm talking about this delta e over here is it clear no doubt so when this obviously electrons are coming at a lower energy level then some amount of energy goes out from the atom and these energy comes out in the form of radiations okay and the radiations must have certain wavelength or frequency right so for lambda or nu is the frequency so what is the energy associated with nu and lambda e is equals to h nu or h c by lambda would you agree with me on this can we write this one yes this is the postulate of bohr's model that when electron comes from higher to lower energy level it radiates energy in the form of radiations and when radiations comes out there must be some wavelength that is lambda or frequency nu hence the difference in energy delta e we can write with this formula with the help of planck's theory yes okay aro is there aro yes sir okay i thought it will come for today anyway delta e is this now we know the formula of energy e we have calculated it last class and the formula of energy for your reference i'll write down here e is equals to minus 2 pi square z square e to the power 4 mass of electron divided by n square h square this is the total energy in any orbit the formula was given okay delta e we have to find out so we can write down here delta e is h times nu and that would be equals to e2 is n is equals to 2 or e1 is n is equals to 1 so for any one orbit or better if i write down this as let let's take an general expression here so i'll write down here what just make a change over here let's write it down as n2 minus n1 is it fine means from n2 to n1 it is coming so this would be equals to here i can write down with the help of this formula minus 2 pi square z square e to the power 4 me divided by n2 square h square minus minus of the same thing 2 pi square z square e to the power 4 me divided by n1 square h square any doubt in this any doubt in this so h nu becomes again h c by lambda and this would be equals to h c by lambda and this would be equals to if i take the constant term common so that would be 2 pi square m e e to the power 4 divided by h square into z square 1 by 
n1 square minus 1 by n2 square. If you solve this, you'll get this. Okay. Now, if I find out one by lambda from this, two pi square m e to the power four. Ha. Huh. If I find out one by lambda from this, then what we get, you see, one by lambda is equals to two pi square m e e to the power 4 z square c h cube into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square okay this constant here this is a constant term you see all of you this is a constant right this constant is the Rydberg constant. Rydberg constant represented by R, capital R. Okay, copy this down, then I'll go to the next page. Constant is defined like this only if is. We are trying to find out the wave number. That's why 1 by lambda we have taken here in the left hand side. Because 1 by lambda is the wave number. Okay, fine. So, okay, so the expression for R, the readable constant we get here is two pi square m e e to the power 4 z square divided by c h cube so for hydrogen atom if i write down for hydrogen atom the read bar constant r is represented by r h for hydrogen atom and this would be equals to 2 pi square m e e to the power 4 1 square divided by c h cube because atomic number is 1. So r h is equals to 2 pi square m e e to the power 4 c h cube. This is the Rydberg constant for hydrogen. Okay. And hence for all other atoms, Rydberg constant r is equals to r h z square this is the readback constant for all other atom
the R value is approximately around one zero nine six seven eight centimeter inverse. In ninety nine percent of the cases, you don't have to use this value. You just write down the answer in terms of R. That is it. Done. Okay. Okay. Before going to the next thing, let us understand first. spectrum we have already discussed spectrum but there are different different types we have for this not very important just you need to understand one thing here that is it absorption and emission spectrum you have to understand that is it write down the heading spectrum write down it is defined as it is defined as the pictorial representation it is defined as the pictorial representation pictorial representation of arrangement of radiation of arrangement of radiation in increasing order of wavelength in increasing order of wavelength or decreasing order of frequency yeah it is defined as the pictorial representation of arrangement of radiation pictorial representation of arrangement of radiation in increasing order of wavelength in increasing order of wavelength in increasing order of wavelength or decreasing order of frequency in increasing order of wavelength or decreasing order of frequency okay the classification of spectrum you see spectrum first of all classified into two categories one is based on based on nature and the other one is based on origin based on origin further based on origin 
it is classified into two categories that is emission emission spectrum and absorption spectrum absorption spectrum okay based on nature it can be of two types it can be of two types one is continuous other one is discrete discrete then also we have two types that is band spectrum spectrum and line spectrum okay band and line copy this down okay so all these things definitions i'm just telling you you don't need to write down this because it's not it's not important see continuous is very simple suppose your white light okay prism and you have a white light correct white light when it passes through a prism it gets split into seven different color right so you'll get a spectrum over here of seven different color this is spectrum in which all the color vibrate are continuous one after the other it is called continuous spectrum continuous spectrum okay so white light is splits into seven colors okay when passes through a prism and the spectrum that we get is continuous okay discrete spectrum is what discrete spectrum like when there is you know when all the wavelengths are not present over there it is of two types the band and line band spectrum write down the band spectrum nothing shit is this one a white light passes through a prism we know white light consists of all seven colors so it splits into seven different colors and that we get here over a screen one after the other so it is a spectrum right continuous spectrum it is all the colors are present over here on the screen this is continuous spectrum mm -hmm. okay now next write down band spectrum it contains it contains colorful bands separated by some dark space colorful bands separated by some dark space okay so in this what i said
like this the bands are present so these are what these are colorful bands okay these are colorful bands present over here of different different colors and in between these bands we have dark space present Okay, so these are bands. And this space here, this space between the two bands are the dark space we have. So this is the band spectrum. Okay, some of the wavelengths are missing over here. Right, means suppose two, three wavelengths are present. So we'll get a band of light here. Then one wavelength is missing, a dark uh, you know, space. Then again, few wavelengths. One wavelength is missing, dark space. Few will like that here. Okay. Line spectrum is opposite of it. Line spectrum is something like this. We have a wavelength line, right? Separated by dark spaces, right? So here what happens right down this is I'll write down here band spectrum so band spectrum the colors are present in the form of bands okay and we have a thin layer of dark space line spectrum here the colors are present in the form of a line one plane one single line will be there and all these lines are separated by dark bands okay opposite of it so write down this is the ordered arrangement of lines this is the ordered arrangement of lines of ordered arrangement of lines of a particular wavelength of a particular wavelength separated by separated by the dark space okay separated by a dark space now you see this line spectrum is obtained from an atom. Obtained from an atom. And this band spectrum is obtained from a molecule. That's why this line spectrum for hydrogen, we also call it a hydrogen spectrum. Okay. Okay, next write down absorption spectrum. Okay, so absorption spectrum is something like this. I'll just draw a diagram. You also copy this down and then I'll explain it. Okay, this one is very logical. You can understand it easily. Okay, okay. so absorption is suppose uh, we have a prism. A prism and this side we have a screen. Okay, 
and we have a light source here we have a light source and there is a gaseous particle any particle present over here any molecule any solution okay so any solution present over here suppose like this in this a solution is present okay so this is what we have this is the this is the slit and through which the light passes through let me finish this diagram i'll explain what is happening here or simply you can also understand we have basically a light source that is it nothing much okay and this light from here it passes through this solution okay and then it goes on to this prism and here what happens here the white light splits into its component okay this is splits into its component like this it comes down like this and we have here this side we have a screen like this suppose and this is screen i am representing here actually okay so just a second this goes over here then this goes over here it deviates like this deviates like this forms here right this is the slit we have this is suppose any solution any substance i am taking this is the prism and this is the screen we have okay so what we observe here that we were expecting all the seven colors over here because it is a white light consist of all seven colors but what we are expecting here what we observe here we observe that the few wavelengths are missing all the wavelengths are not present here in this screen okay a few wavelengths are missing few wavelengths are present over here a few are missing on this screen so this suppose these are the wavelengths present and here we have the dark space it means here the wavelength is we are not getting we are not getting these wavelengths over here after the prism so since here we have white light okay so it contains all the seven colors but when it passes through the substance and then the prism and then few wavelengths are missing over here so here we have all wavelengths and here we are not getting all wavelengths it means some of the wavelength has been absorbed yes or no and which one who is responsible here to absorb the wavelength or light
yes that's right so point is whatever substance you have used here solution or gas that is that probably absorbs a few wavelengths and leaves the other wavelength which we get over here right so obviously the substance we are using here it is responsible for the absorption of those wavelengths this is spectrum that we get here where few wavelengths are missing which has been absorbed by the substance here this we call it as absorption spectrum okay now to confirm this that whether this substance only have absorbed this wavelength what we have done we have taken the same substance and when we heat this it emits the same wavelength which was missing over here this confirms that this substance absorbs a few wavelength and the spectrum that we get here is called uh, absorption spectrum and when we heat this we get the same wavelength which was missing over here that confirms our theory over here and the wavelength that we and the spectrum that we get here when we heat this the spectrum that we get here which includes all those wavelengths which were missing over here in absorption spectrum which were missing in the absorption spectrum this is a uh, spectrum that we get we call it as emission spectrum right so when we heat this the spectrum that we get is emission spectrum this one is absorption spectrum this is just for you to know this they won't ask you any question on this yes correct it is on heating the gas it radiates the same wavelength which 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 it absorbed in that particular case ha uh, gurman i am coming to that wait so did you understand what is absorption what is emission spectrum clear not very important but you should know this fact that what happens when the white light passes to a substance point is to sum up all this what happens when a white light passes through a substance the substance absorbs few wavelengths not all right this is what the discussion we have done yes or no okay now why does it happen why atoms uh, uh, one more thing if this substance you are taking hydrogen here then the spectrum that we get we call it as hydrogen spectrum that is it nothing much okay now why this gaseous substance or any substance absorbs only a few wavelengths why not all that's a very genuine question correct so the answer for this one is what that and after this experiment only we came to know about this fact that within an atom there are energy levels present okay within an atom there are energy levels present okay this only gives us this idea that an energy level present within an atom all these are energy level we have discussed this okay now suppose the electrons electron is present over here in this particular uh, orbit energy level right what we have done then a white light passes through this right this is the white light passes through this atom gas whatever it is so this is the atom of the substance and white light passes through it 
okay now what happens this light consists of different different wavelengths and with different different wavelengths we have different different energies because e is equals to hc by lambda so when lambda you change energy will also change actually when white light passes through there will be interaction of electron and the photon of all those wavelengths right so it absorbs only those wavelengths corresponding to that if energy level is present in the atom suppose corresponding to this energy level the atom electrons absorbs energy then this will jump to the next higher energy level further it absorbs energy it will jump to the next higher energy level so electron absorbs only the those wavelengths corresponding to that the energy level is present within the atom are you getting it now if suppose there is a wavelength that wavelength gives some amount of energy to this electron the electron will have certain amount of energy when it takes that particular wavelength corresponding to that energy if the energy level is not present within an atom then the electron won't take the, that particular wavelength it will radiate that wavelength completely did you get it so why these electrons absorbs a particular wavelength because there are different different energy levels present within an atom it absorbs wavelength jumps to the next higher energy level when again absorbs jumps to the next higher energy level if that energy level is not present corresponding to the energy of the electron it won't take that particular wavelength then you need to find out we need to find out n for that pradyumn n value if you find out you know the orbit Yes, tell me. In doubt? So this is the spectrum we have. Most of the light they passes through the atom. Few wavelengths it absorbs because corresponding to that wavelength, atom has energy level present. Okay. Now from this suppose. it comes down here then some wavelength it radiates corresponding to this energy difference again comes down it again radiates some wavelength lambda 2 again comes down lambda in this transition it radiates one wavelength in this transition it radiates one wavelength in this transition it radiates one wavelength lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 no atom radiates energy when you when you heat it that's why you see an iron rod you heat it changes color continuously right and finally it becomes blue because it radiates radiations 
when you heat it. In NCRT, you will study this, the Planck theory, that this phenomenon, it is you know, discussed over there. When you keep on heating an iron atom, it changes color continuously because it is, it is radiating energy. No, we are talking about this, uh, you know, the particle nature of electrons. Okay, it's not like we are talking about general uh, objects or any other matter. Okay, we are talking here about subatomic particles. So it will have a very different kind of, you know, behavior towards heat. And that is what we absorb. It's very simple example I'm giving you. You must see, uh, no, no, when you heat an iron rod, it changes color because it radiates energy continuously. Right, frequency decreases, frequency decreases, wavelength increases. That's what the different frequencies coming out, no? That, that it is other way, Shidish. The question you are asking, it is actually other way. It has been observed that, that when we heat an iron rod, this way only the color changes takes place. First of all, dull red then red, then it becomes white, and then it becomes blue. Right, so frequency continuous, yes, frequency continuously increasing. You see red to blue, frequency increases continuously. It means what the, it means what the frequency that we are receiving when you heat the iron rod, that frequency is increasing, and hence we are you know, observing this as blue or white or anything else. Right, so this is the phenomenon we have. We observe this phenomenon and then we explain this. Okay, when we heat this, frequency increases. For, maybe for different substances possible, not for uh, iron rod. See, it depends upon the energy levels of different, different atoms based on the, uh, you know, atom, their electronic repulsion and everything. What is the energy level is there? Based on that, it radiates energy. It radiates radiation. And radiation will have certain wavelength, certain frequency. Based on those wavelength and frequency, we observe the light, the color of the light. Now, so with this experiment, the hydrogen spectrum, we get to know about that the atom contains energy level. And that, that is what the Bohr's was talking about. Um, said, the postulates of Bohr's was what? That atom present in an orbit and it neither absorbs nor emits energy in that case. But if the electrons absorbs energy, it jumps to the higher energy level. If it radiates energy, it comes down to the lower energy level. Okay, that's what he said, right? And this is, this is what found to be correct when we have this spectrum analysis when we did. We, we came to know this fact that within an atom, there are energy levels present. No, that's what, Ansh, you are not getting me. You are giving energy, but the electron is taking up that energy is not, that is what the case is. Again, you are taking it other way. I have given you this example of iron rod. When iron rod changes its color, it means it is radiating that frequency. How do we observe that color is red? Could you tell me that? How do we observe a particular color? 
why we find this thing is red or this thing is blue because the same frequency we are we are receiving right ansh if you if you receive the frequency of red the color is appeared to be red if if you receive the frequency of blue the color is appeared to be blue right now coming back to this question when like i take the example of iron rod when you heat it you you observe that there is a change in color from dull red to red red to white white to blue this is what we observe so when we absorb when we observe it it means what it means it radiates different different frequency when you keep on heating it and then we have this conclusion so you are you are discussing something else you are discussing a general thing when we heat then we supply energy but the atom takes energy it is not like it does not radiate energy at that point of time it's not like you are giving energy and the atom takes all the energy and sit back right i am telling you what i am trying to make you understand with an with an exam with an example and that example is given in your book also your doubt is how it is radiating energy since we are providing it how this goes down to the lower energy level i am telling you what we are heating it right and electron gets the energy but it it won't absorb it in that process it also radi radiates radiation right so different different frequency goes out and when electron radiates frequency correct it will definitely come down to the lower energy level and that is what it is happening okay so point i am just concluding it what that within an atom there are energy level present electron absorbs or emits energy depending upon in which energy level it is present and what amount of energy it is absorbing or radiating right now based on this only we can define the number of spectral lines now we got to know about it that within an atom there are energy level present okay so all of you write down the heading number of spectral lines okay so all these things that we have discussed till now today this is for your understanding right the point or the concept that we are going to discuss now right on this you will get questions okay obviously to understand this concept all these understanding require okay now write down the heading number of spectral lines all of you draw this these are the various energy levels we have like n is equals to 1 then n is equals to 2 3 4 5 6 7 eight and nine infinite energy levels such energy levels possible right now electron can jump from higher to lower energy level like electron may come from this to this right from this to this
This is the transition of electrons. This is the transition of electrons. From this to lower energy level. And this kind of transition is possible with here also. So these are the transitions of electron from any higher orbit to lower orbit n is equals to 1, then n is equals to 2, 3, 4 and so on. Now, when the electron jumps to, all of you have to draw this, okay? All of you. From any higher orbit, when electron jumps to n is equals to 1, okay? Obviously, from here to here, it will radiate one particular wavelength. 5 to 1 radiates one particular wavelength. 4 to this, one particular wavelength and this. Then all these transitions will get different different radiation right so we'll get a series of wavelength here and the series that we get here when n is equals to one final n value is one is we call it as lyman series l y m a n lyman series when n is equals to two this is Balmer series this one is bastion when n is equals to three it is bastion One mistake I have made here, I'll just correct it. N is equals to 3 is Bastion. This should be 4. Okay. So, Lyman, Balmer, Bastion. This is bracket. And this one is fund. This one is fund. So this is the various series that we get. So the n value, the final value of n is 1 for Lyman. Okay, nf is 1. Means transition from any higher energy state to n is equals to 1. Balmer series when any higher transition state to n is equals to 2. 
Bastion is any higher transition state q n is equals to 3 and so on. Copy down this. Let me know once you are done. First one is Lyman, second one is Balmer, third one is Paschen, P A S C H E N. The third one is Paschen. P A S C H E N. The fourth one is bracket B R A C K E double T. The fifth one is fund P F U N D. P F U N D fund. After this, also we have Humphrey series and all, but not important. Okay. Now, would you all of you agree with me on this? Then we'll get here a series of wavelengths. Yes or no? What is the NI value of Lyman series? NI means the electron present in the orbit initially. That is NI. NI value can be anything between from 2 to infinity. Yes or no? For Lyman series I'm talking about. Suppose NF, I will write it as the final shell or the energy orbit in which the electron jumps. Third one is Paschen, P-A-S-C-H-E-N. And fifth one is Fund Series, P-F-U-N-D, Fund Series. Okay. So suppose if NF is a final orbit, so for Lyman Series, what is the value of NI, possible value of NI? Ni for Lyman series could be anything from 2 to infinity. Yes or no? Yes, guys. Correct. So we'll get a series of wavelengths in this. Agreed? will get a series of wavelength and hence will have a maximum value of wavelength and a minimum value of wavelength for each of these series. So we need to know what is the maximum and minimum value we have here. Right in terms of R we'll try to find out. I'll show you how we'll find out the maximum and minimum value of wavelength. Correct. So one second guys. So I was talking about the wavelength, right? Okay. So let us understand the general thing first of all here. Obviously when the 
you know, electron jumps from one particular orbit to the lower energy orbit. Right, so if electrons jumps from this one to this orbit, it comes down to the lower energy level to this orbit, then obviously it radiates energy in this process, right? Suppose it is Ni, the final initial orbit, and Nf in which the electron jumps, the final one. So in this process, it, it emits radiations, right? Radiations of certain wavelength, suppose lambda, okay? We can find out this delta E. Delta E is equals to what we can write? We have Hc by lambda, we know, because lambda that comes out in this transition, right? And delta E value, we know it is, at c by lambda is equals to we can write e f minus e i the final minus initial e f minus e i and this is only we have done in Rydberg relation but is one by lambda is equals to r z square r h in fact here z square one by nf square minus 1 by ni square. Oh, it is ulta. 1 by ni square minus 1 by nf square. Because total energy is negative, right? So we'll write 1 by ni square minus 1 by nf square. Just a second. Okay, we'll get this. Correct. Depending upon this value, NF and NI, we can find out maximum and minimum wavelength over here right so for hydrogen what we can write for hydrogen one by lambda the radiation that comes out is equals to r one by nf square minus one by ni square Correct, this one we have. So basically you can consider this as the formula of wavelength also, wave number also, when there's a transition between the two orbits, Ni and Nf. Correct. We need to find out lambda max and lambda minimum for various series, Lyman, Balmer, Pasteur, Bracket, Fund, using this formula, okay? Now we are going to see this. The first series we have, that is Lyman series. Now here I want you to interact that in Lyman series, what is the value of NF? Could you tell me the final orbit? What is the value of NF here? One. Is it always one? Is it always one? Yes, it is always one. Because Lyman series is defined when the electron comes from to the first orbit. Always one, right? That is one thing. Could you tell me the value of Ni? What is the possible value of Ni?
the possible value of ni could be anything from 2 to infinity 2 3 4 5 till infinity right that is the possible value of ni so we need to find out what is the value of ni so that this wavelength that comes out in the transition that becomes maximum or minimum okay so let us try and understand this how to find out the value of ni 1 by lambda is equals to r 1 by nf square minus 1 by ni square this is the formula we have okay now for maximum wavelength you see what we need to do here for lambda max correct maximum wavelength r is a constant nf is also only one we cannot change that we can change only ni so that lambda would be the maximum okay for lambda max the value of ni we need to analyze here you see if ni is 2 that is the minimum value here then 1 by this term would be the maximum and 1 by this term would be the maximum it means this term will be minimum this term will be minimum then 1 by lambda will be minimum and 1 by lambda if minimum then lambda would be maximum so what we can say for lambda max ni should be minimum so it is inverse relation lambda max ni should be minimum it means ni value is 2 and for lambda minimum ni value should be maximum and its value is infinity for lambda minimum did you get this two relation? Tell me. Yes, what I said, nothing you have to memorize here. Okay. When it is there to memorize, I, I myself tell you that this point you have to memorize this. But here you don't have to memorize anything. Once you know this formula, R is a constant, NF value is also fixed. You can change only NI. So we have to change NI so that this would be maximum or minimum. Right. So you see, if lambda is minimum, we are taking. That is 2. If NI is 2 here, not lambda, NI is 2 we are taking. Since it is minimum, so 1 by NI square would be maximum. Hence, we are subtracting a maximum value in 1 by nf square. So when we subtract a maximum value, this term will be the minimum. Since we are subtracting the maximum one, so this is minimum. It means 1 by lambda is minimum. 1 by lambda is minimum means what? Lambda is maximum. For lambda max, ni should be minimum. For lambda minimum, ni should be maximum. How many of you understood this? CLR you can type if you got it. Correct? Now nothing you have to do. Once you know this thing that lambda max ni minimum, lambda minimum ni maximum. Just need to substitute and find out lambda in terms of r. So could you tell me what is the value of uh, if I write down 1 by lambda max here for example. This is equals to R, you let it be as it is. 1 by NF square. NF square is 1 square. NI square, we know NI value is 2. So 2 square. So 1 by lambda max is equals to 3R by 4. So lambda max is equals to 4 by 3R. These kinds of questions you will be getting. Burman, you were getting this only? The question that you were asking? Similarly, for 1 by lambda minimum, 
this would be what r into 1 by 1 square minus 1 by infinity square that would be zero only so lambda minimum is equals to 1 by r so you see i have already told you that in this series we'll get a series of wavelengths maximum and minimum so wavelength falls in which range here less than equals to the maximum value is 4 by 3 r and this wavelength it falls in this range 1 by r when you substitute the value of r here this is important when you substitute the value of r here you will get a definite range of wavelength and that wavelength falls in ultraviolet region this question also they have asked many times that balmer lyman series falls in which region so it is ultraviolet region very important must remember it any doubt in this tell me any doubt okay now i want you to respond here the second one is bama series tell me the value of nf value of nf 2 value of ni could be anything from 3 to infinity right so 3 4 5 and so on so for lambda max what is the value of ni what is the value of ni3 for lambda minimum what is the value of nf for ni infinity okay so these two value we can substitute in the relation and we can find out the lambda could you tell me the series the range here for the lambda quickly The value of lambda it falls in this range less than or equal to 36 by 5 r and greater or equal to 4 by r here yes And this wavelength, if you substitute the value of R, this wavelength falls in visible region. This is the only series that we could see. Okay, others we cannot see.
Pashtun series, NF value is 3. NI value could be anything 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on. And you know of lambda max and lambda minimum. And for this lambda max value, I'll write down here, lambda max for Pashtun is 144 by 7R and lambda minimum for Pashtun is 9 by R. And this wavelength here, it falls in infrared region. Okay. So this reason you must remember, it is infrared. Next, write down bracket. Bracket series. Bracket series also falls in infrared region. Infrared region. Okay, so NF is uh, is four here. NI could be anything from five to infinity. Okay, lambda max, lambda minimum, you can find out here. Fund series. NF is five. And can I anything from six to infinity? Okay, this also falls in infrared region. So first one is UV, second one is visible, third, fourth, fifth, infrared. Done? Finish? Okay, now the next one we have to understand the last part of this particular discussion is the number of spectral lines. What is the number of spectral lines? Let us understand this with an example. Suppose an electron jumps from fourth to first orbit. What are the various possible ways we have over here? Means how, by how many, how many ways electrons from four comes down to one? Okay, that is what we need to find out. And the number of possible ways 
is the number of spectral lines that we get. So one of the possible ways is what? One of the possible way is first electron from four, it will come to three. Then from three, it will come to two. And then from two, it will come to one. This is one possibility. Another one is what? From fourth one, it directly jumps to two. And then it may come from two to one. Okay. Or another possibility is what? It jumps from four to one directly. Okay. So like this, how many possibilities we have? Three plus two plus one. That is, there are six different ways, different ways by which electron can make this transition. Hence the number of spectral lines is six here. Yes, should you tell me? Fifth one is also infrared auro. The first one is ultraviolet. Second one is visible. Last three is intra, intra, infrared. Ah, four to three and three to one, we have discussed it. This is the way we have. Four to three and three to one. Ah, that way also you can go. No. See, one possibility is this. We can jump from 4 to 3, 3 to 2, 2 to 1. 3 to 1 if you consider Right, 3 to 1 if you consider, that includes this and this also here. One thing you have to understand here, that from the initial orbit, it may jump to any lower orbit. Right, from here it may jump to any lower orbit, but after that you have to make the transition one by one. You cannot make it from 3 to 1 directly. From three, it will come down to two, and then from two, it will come down to one. But initial jump is anything. It can jump directly from four to one, four to two, and four to three. Yes, so the lower one, we have to follow one by one. One step, and then the second step, and then the third one. Right? So this is how we can find out the number of spectral lines. But I won't suggest you to go by this way. Okay, there's a formula for this. The best way is to use that formula. Write down the number of spectral lines produced. In this case, only suppose if I am considering. is equals to we get ni minus nf into ni minus nf plus 1 divided by 2. This is the formula you use, you'll get the answer. So for this one also you see ni value is 4, nf value is 1. Answer is 6. 
So let's we use this formula and we get the answer. Then yes, that is what we are getting to this. Now, till here, it, it is a bit, you know, difficult to understand things because there are so many experiments and we were using the result of those experiments of classical physics. Now, now from here onwards, we have done with the, the difficult part of this chapter. Difficult not in the sense of, you know, uh, solving questions, but again, to understand those things, all those basics, uh, you know, uh, experiments which has been done in order to understand the property, those things is a bit difficult to understand but in terms of solving questions it is not that difficult but now from here onwards it is you know easier than the things that we have discussed later right previously now the next thing you need to understand here is the dual nature of matter okay we have already discussed it one more thing we'll see here that is de Broglie hypothesis De Broglie hypothesis. So De Broglie is the name of the scientist. He also suggested that that all the molecules, all the object contains wave property with it. Okay, particle as well as wave properties. That's why this we also call it as dual nature of matter matter the hypothesis explains the dual nature of matter okay this explains the dual nature of matter write down in this write down in 1924 D. Broggy in 1924, D. Broggy proposed that D. Broggy proposed that. that all microscopic material all microscopic material particles in motion right all microscopic material particles in motion in motion have dual characters have dual characters that is that is the wave that is the wave properties
that is the wave properties as well as the particle properties okay so what he suggested louis de broglie the naval scientist he suggested that any particle okay any particle in, in motion consist of wave nature means possess wave nature with it okay and when the particle has wave characteristics then there must be some wavelength of that particular wave which is associated with the object right so what is that wavelength okay so write down next line according to him according to him the wavelength associated with a particle of mass m according to him the wavelength associated with a particle of mass m moving with a velocity v is given by is given by lambda is equals to h by p where p is the momentum and h is again the planck constant so any mass m moving with the velocity v the momentum is what please tell me any mass m moving with the velocity v what is the momentum mv h by m v okay this we can derive with the help of planck's theory and einstein equation okay so you see here first of all the formula of lambda we get lambda is equals to h by mv that is what we are going to use to solve the question okay but how did he get this according to planck's theory what we can write we have e is equals to h nu or h c by lambda okay c is the velocity now now einstein mass energy equation that is e is equals to mc square if we equate the two we'll get mc square is equals to hc by lambda this is wave property this is particle nature mc square so since the molecule contains both so we can equate energy for both so we get lambda is equals to h by mc c is the light of speed of light right velocity of light so for any, for any other molecules any other object we can write velocity as mv and this is the wavelength associated with any mass of any mass m moving with a velocity v see i said what first of all this is the formula of wavelength associated with any object of mass m moving with a velocity v now we know the relation of planck e is equals to hc by lambda and we know einstein mass equation mass energy equation here is e is equals to mc square so this is the wave characteristics lambda wavelength associated with it energy is this and energy of a particle is also mc square e is equals to mc square so these two energy term we can equate because he suggested what that the any particle consist both wave as well as particle nature with it 
So E when you equate, so it becomes MC square is equals to HC by lambda. And when you solve this for lambda is equals to you get H by MC. For any object of mass M with velocity V, we can write lambda is equals to H by MV. This is the relation. Done. Okay, now the basic formula is this only, but we can represent this in two different forms. And those forms are also important. Okay, see the formula that we get here, what lambda is equals to H by MV. So could you write down this lambda in terms of kinetic energy? What is kinetic energy? This is the first formula. If any object of mass M velocity V right moving with the velocity v then the kinetic energy k is equals to half mv square so what is mv from this both you multiply by m and then two you multiply this so mv is equals to 2mk so hence wavelength lambda is equals to what h by root under of 2mk where k is the kinetic energy, you must remember this. Okay, so this k is the kinetic energy. This is also kinetic energy. Correct? One more formula we can also write here. That is, we know this thing, if any charged particle charged particle Q moving under A potential difference V then the kinetic energy of charged particle is Q times V the potential difference and this kinetic energy if you substitute here in this equation the lambda for any charged particle we have H by 2 M Q times into V root over of it, where this V is the This V is the potential difference potential difference not velocity Did you understand all the three formula? 
any one of these three formula you can use to solve the question depending upon the data given. What happened, Otto? Yeah, I understood that. But what hap what happened so special in the school today? Because every day you will have this thing, no? Uh, the school classes and all. Okay, tell me when you want the break. You want the break now? Okay, so tell me, tell me, all of you just give me a suggestion. What time we should start? Six fifteen. Okay, Aura is asking me. 25 minutes I can't give Rubav. I can go maximum for 20 minutes. Okay, so Aura is asking for a longer break. So guys, we'll do one thing. I can, you know, start at 6.20. Is it fine with all of you? Five minutes more I can consider. Okay, fine, fine. Take a break now. Okay, take some rest. I can understand the school thing and all, okay? We'll resume the session at 6.20. Fine? Okay. Take a break.
Hello. Yeah, guys, can you hear me? Okay, anyone has joined just now this class? Yes? No, not Akhil sir, I think one, yeah, Sanjana, right? This is the first class, Sanjana. Okay, so just now you have joined. No, you are not there before the break. Okay, fine. So Sanjana, we are doing a uh, atomic structure, right? So you have missed, uh, you know, a few things. Uh, so probably it will be you know difficult for you to you know uh, go align with the class no but uh, don't worry like uh, you know you try to understand it whatever we are doing it now but definitely we'll share the recording and then you can uh, watch the recording whenever you get time and then you can get back to me if in case of any doubt if you have okay yeah so yeah so we have discussed uh, you know a few things that is deep Broggy wavelength. We have discussed lambda is equals to h by mv is the formula, and these two formula also we have discussed. Okay. Now one more thing we'll discuss here, and then we'll see the questions numericals based on it. Now you see, uh, from this deep Broggy wavelength, we can prove one of the postulates of Bohr model. Okay, what is that? I'll show you. What happens that it suggests that electron moves. Uh, you know, uh, in a path, and it consists of wave properties with it. Correct? So, suppose the electron is moving in a path, this is a circular path of the electron, right? And since it contains wave properties with it, so along, electron is moving along this path, okay, in the circular path. And since it contains wave properties, so there is wave also associated with this, with this part, with this electron. This way also, the wave is also moving this way. Just a second. This is the wave associated with it, okay? Now, in this one complete rotation, this circumference, what I am assuming, I am assuming there are n wave creates in one complete, you know, rotation, right? So, write down this. Consider an electron is moving in in a circular path nothing nothing we are doing de broggy only just continuation of that consider an electron is moving in a circular path of radius r of radius r and in one complete rotation
in one complete rotation n number of wave creates creates like this meaning what from this point to this point you see here if you try to understand i have just you know i had already explained you how we define a wave here so from this point to this point you see we have one wave right this distance is one wavelength from this point to this point now from this point to this point you have another wave right then we have another wave another wave another wave so basically we have n number of waves creates in this that's what i am assuming so what is the circumference its radius is r i am assuming so what is the circumference for this it is 2 pi r circumference is 2 pi r and since n waves creates over here so in terms of wavelength if i write down the circumference it is n times into lambda how many of you understood this clear n wave creates 2 pi r is the circumference why should this it's simple let's see what i said n waves creates right so from this point to this point one wavelength then this point to this point another wavelength this point to this point another wavelength and so on we can go there are n number of waves we have here till this point okay so since n wave over here we have so length of this path is what n times into lambda and n times into lambda is what the circumference of this path 2 pi r and we know lambda is equals to just now we have seen the formula n h by m into v right lambda is equals to h by m v okay now when you solve this you'll get if you cross multiply this and solve you'll get mv r is equals to n h by 2 pi could you tell me where we have discussed this where have we discussed this particular relation mv r is equals to nh by 2 pi that is the bohr postulate right bohr postulate that is mv r is equals to nh by 2 pi so bohr has given this relation but there was no any proof okay he observed it he has done some experiment and observed this and based on his calculation the angular momentum should be equals to nh by 2 pi that is what he said but there were no any mathematical derivation of it so after de broglie hypothesis when we have this information that particle contains dual nature okay after that we can we you know we are we will be able to derive we you know we derive this particular relation which again confirms which again confirms the you know the confirms that that the postulates of bohr's atomic model was actually correct okay so this was the mathematical derivation of it understood this okay now after this one more thing what happens here that if we try to find out the position of an electron in this orbit right since the electron possess wave characteristics also so it's very difficult to find out the position and the momentum of an electron simultaneously since it contains wave property if you try to find out position its momentum will be changed if you try to find out momentum its position is changed now. so both the term we cannot find out simultaneously right both the term we cannot find out simultaneously because it contains wave characteristics so write down one point here
write down since the electron contains ah just a second I'll write down the point i'll explain since the electron contains wave nature since the electron contains wave nature then the exact position and momentum of an electron then the exact position and momentum of electron the exact position and momentum of electron we cannot find out simultaneously okay so this is one thing now we'll discuss this just a second we'll discuss this but this point actually comes when we get the wave nature of uh, no and microscopic particles like electron proton neutron and this is observed by or given by a scientist called heisenberg okay and the principle of this which gives this fact that just now i've told you is we call it as heisenberg uncertainty principle so write down this and then i'll discuss what is the meaning of this point okay write down heisenberg's uncertainty principle statement you write down statement according to heisenberg uncertainty principle okay according to heisenberg's uncertainty principle it is impossible to measure it is impossible to measure right it is impossible to measure the exact position and exact momentum the exact position and exact momentum of a moving microscopic particle in bracket you write down electrons it is impossible to measure the exact position and exact momentum of a moving microscopic particles like electrons next line the heisenberg uncertainty principle may be expressed as may be expressed as delta x into delta p greater equal to h by so heisenberg also has done its research and he suggested that okay fine uh, exact position and exact momentum we cannot find out but the uncertainty in position delta x and uncertainty in momentum delta p follows this relation delta x is the uncertainty in position and delta p is the uncertainty in momentum 
momentum. So delta P, we can further write it as M times delta V because mass is the constant. So delta P, we can also write in terms of mass and delta V where this delta V is the uncertainty in velocity. Uncertainty in velocity. So if I substitute this here, then the expression becomes delta x into delta v greater or equal to h by 4 pi m. m is the mass here. So this is the relation of Heisenberg uncertainty. Basically, we have copied this down first. Okay, copy, done. Okay. Now let us try and understand this. Now suppose an electron is moving in a path, okay, circular path. Suppose at some point the electron is present over here at this position, uh, which we cannot find out, okay, simultaneously, position and momentum of it. And this is the nucleus. Now to find out the position, what we do, we'll just try to, we'll use a radiation here. And we use the radiation in order to, like we strike this, uh, radiation over here. Okay, suppose this is the radiation we have. So this radiation is the incident photon, suppose I am using, in order to find out new in, I'll write down, some frequency we are using so that it will go here it strikes with this electron and when it when it you uh, know reflects back okay when it reflects back then here we, i'll use a microscope so that it can absorb the reflecting photon reflecting photon and then we can find out the uh, position of it okay at this position it is present this is the method we use. Okay. And generally what happens, we use high frequency for this purpose so that the wavelength is small and we can receive it easily. Okay. High frequency we use, so wavelength is small. So what happens if you try and try to find out the position of it, will incident a high frequency light on this, it reflects back, receive it and we can understand. But in this process, what happens, the moment you take low wavelength means high frequency, and when it strikes at it, okay, it reflects back, the moment you receive it, by that moment you receive it and try to find out the position of it, it changes its position. It goes to the another position because high frequency means what? High energy. So wavelength is fine, small, but frequency is very high over here. All these energy of photon it takes and it changes its position, right? So the moment you receive this and find out the position of it, at that time, the electron is not present over here. Means if you try to find out the position of it, it has changed its position because of the radiation we are imparting. 
correct because the whole of this energy of photon transferred to the electron and hence it changed its position if you want to determine momentum then radiation if you will use the larger wavelength larger wavelength means what larger wavelength means small energy right so you can find out we can find out the momentum but we won't be able to find out the position at that point of time that's why it's difficult to find out the exact position and momentum both of the electron simultaneously at a point right so exact relation we cannot find out value we cannot find out but the uncertainty in position and uncertainty in momentum it follows this relation and this is heisenberg uncertainty principle got it hello am i audible see what i said if you try to find out the position of it correct at this at this point of time it has c at this point of time there is a certain velocity to certain momentum but the moment you try to find out the position of this with the help of this photon and this microscope okay you are imparting energy into this electron right so the momentum also you are changing because it takes energy it goes out and its velocity changes hence its momentum is changing so in order to find out the position you are changing the momentum and hence that also you are not finding out because you are not able to find out because when it takes energy it moves to the other position by the time you take this you know you receive this reflected photon and try to find out the position of it correct so that's what i said you we usually take a radiation a lower wavelength radiation to find out the position but in that way we are providing energy to the electron and hence electron changes its position and momentum right hence it is difficult to find out the both thing at the same point of time did you get it position means in the orbit in which orbit the electron is present what would be the pop, you know possible distance from the nucleus that is the position yes so what happens here now you listen to me all of you yes 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 i i am coming to that point just a second now all of you listen to me very carefully now heisenberg what he said he said that the exact position and momentum of an electron any microscopic particle we cannot find out simultaneously but according to bohr if you see he has already given the radius velocity once you have velocity you will have momentum and you will have the radius but according to bohr it is possible to find out the you know we know the exact position and momentum of an electron so again here is a contradiction right so that's why later on let the the entire concept get you know got changed after this when heisenberg uncertainty principle comes into the picture right bohr was saying that we have orbit in the orbit the electron is present radius of the orbit is this velocity of the electron is this and we can find out the momentum of the electron that is mv all these things were known but when heisenberg uncertainty principle comes into the picture then all these concept has become has got changed now right 
because one of the thing is the contradictory of the other thing, other one, right? So after this, what happens when Heisenberg uncertainty principle comes into the picture, which says that we cannot find out the exact position and momentum of an electron with accuracy simultaneously, then a new concept of finding an electron, you know, that is introduced. And that concept is based on the probability of finding an electron, okay, around the nucleus. And this three-dimensional space where the probability of finding an electron is maximum is called orbital. So after this Heisenberg uncertainty principle, we came, we came to this conclusion that there is nothing called orbit within an atom, but it is orbital which is present within it. Right, the difference between orbit and orbital is, in orbit, the position of the electron is known, right, its shape is circular, right, but it is not for orbital. Orbital shape may or may not be circular. Means the path that the electron follows may or may not be circular, correct? And in this, the exact position is not known. Okay, we can have anything uh, in the orbital. So I am not going into this orbital part now. Let us discuss some questions based on this numericals. But I'm just trying to relate all these things so that when we start orbital, you can connect with it. What I said that Heisenberg uncertainty principle, it says that exact position and momentum of an electron, we cannot find out okay, simultaneously. And he has given this relation that uncertainty in position, in position and momentum is this, and it follows this relation, right? But what happens after this? Whatever, you know, the work Bohr has done, now there is a question, there was a question on his attempt that he made to explain the atomic model. According to Bohr, we know the exact path of an electron because we know the radius at this distance, in the circular path, the electron is moving, according to him. So we know the exact path of the electron. We know the radius of that particular path, that is the circular path orbit. Okay, we know velocity of electron in that particular orbit. And we know the momentum, kinetic energy of the electrons also in those orbits, correct? But that has changed now because it says that the exact position and momentum we cannot find. So after this, we started looking for a three-dimensional space where the probability of finding an electron is maximum. And this three-dimensional space is known as orbital. Did you get it? Yes? Okay. Now this orbital part, we'll discuss it later. Okay, we'll see this later. Let us discuss some questions based on the concept we have discussed today. Correct? So, Okay, try question number 55.
क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी फाइव टू Oro is getting C. Is it C? Shitesh is getting D. Arabi is getting B. Who is getting A? I think I get all the four options then. Ah, Rubab is getting A, so I got all four A, B, C, D. Arya got B, Sanjana got D. Yes. So those who got who got B, B is the correct answer, I guess here. Okay, so look at the question. The difference between the incident energy and threshold energy of an electron effect experiment is five electron volt. Correct. So what is given? In the question, it is given. Question number fifty-five. Difference between the incident energy. So H nu in. Minus h nu naught, it is given, and that is five electron volt. Correct. The de Broglie wavelength of the electrons. So obviously, the kinetic energy K e max is given for the electron. That is five electron volt. K is given. So lambda is equals to what? H by root under two m k. we have discussed this formula lambda in terms of kinetic energy so that would be 6.6 into 10 to the power minus 34 divided by 2 into the mass of electron we know 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 into kinetic energy is 5 but we need to put this in Joule, right? So one point six into ten to the power nineteen minus nineteen. This is what we get root over of it. Okay, now when you solve this, it is forty twenty to so ten to the power minus nine. You will get no twenty five. Correct. So answer would be six point six into ten to the power minus nine. And these things will be here as it is. Two into nine point one into five into one point six. So one point six into five is eight. Eight into two is sixteen. Sixteen into nine is one forty four something. Okay, so one forty four something. You are getting the closest option is one forty five point six. Option B is correct. Yes. could you tell me question number 
no it's not yeah you can do 58 also you can try in fact you can try 57 to 60 all four you can try Okay, I'll discuss fifty seventh one first. Fifty seventh, all of you see. I think all of you have got the wrong one, wrong answer here. Fifty seventh, the correct answer is C here. Why C? Because it is asking for de Broglie wavelength. De Broglie wavelength lambda is equals to we can write h by m v. Right. So lambda and mass is inversely proportional here. You see. so for heavier object obviously the wavelength we don't observe because it is inversely proportional right that's why the particle which has maximum mass has least wavelength electron obviously we have the minimum mass over here 10 to the power minus 31 proton 10 to the power minus 27 more than that of electron alpha particle has the maximum mass over here that's why the wavelength for alpha particle is minimum alpha particle is minimum okay so this is the 57th one 58th one what is the answer for 58th one an electron of mass m and charge e is excited from rest through a potential difference v the kinetic energy we know the kinetic energy is what q into v when the charge q moving across a potential difference v the kinetic energy is qv so it is e into v so 58th one is v Okay, fifty ninth one. If the uncertainty in position of an electron is zero, means delta x uncertainty in position delta x is zero, then the uncertainty in momentum of the electron is fifty ninth one. If it is zero, then delta p is what infinity. Okay. delta x what is the relation we have here delta x into delta p greater or equal to h by 4 pi so this is zero this must be infinity okay that's why you see uncertainty in position if you make it zero then this is becomes so uncertain it becomes infinity correct that's why the both thing position and momentum we cannot find out simultaneously Okay, six zero. Question number sixty. What is the answer? So lambda de Broglie wavelength is h divided by two m k root over of it, and that would be just you substitute all the value. Question number sixty. The answer will be 
option B here you'll get. Okay, H is 6.626 10 to the power minus 34 divided by 2 into 9.1 10 to the power minus 31. Kinetic energy is 4.55 10 to the power minus 25 root over. A little bit of calculation you will have in this chapter. Okay, answer you will get 7.28. 10 to the power minus 7 meter. Always take care of unit in this kind of questions. Okay. Try this question. Done? Okay. Finish all four, then we'll start discussing. Yes, correct. Mg is milligram. You can use calculator if you want. Yeah, it is SI, no. So keep it in KZ.
finish. Okay. Question number 66. The D blocky wavelength, one milligram grain of sand blown by 20 meter per second wind is. So lambda we need to find out. Lambda is equals to H by MV. Everything is given. 6.626. Ten to the power minus thirty four divided by the mass is ten to the power one milligram so ten to the power minus six and velocity is twenty. You solve this, you'll get the answer. Okay. I can you can also do one thing for you know to solve the question, you see the options if you see. In option, it is given 3.3, 3.3 everywhere, correct? So for this one, it is easily understandable. You can understand this, that you can take approximation here and instead of 6.626, you can take 6.6 .6 to solve this question. This approximation you can make depending upon the question, right? So it is 3.3 into 10 to the power minus 29 meter right so answer is option a <coughs> yeah certainty in position and momentum are equal. So delta X equals to delta P. Uncertainty in velocity, fine. So we can write M delta V here. So delta V we need to find out it is delta X by M. So we can write down the uncertainty, Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Delta X into delta V is equals to H by four pi M. You can substitute V in terms of X. Sorry, we need to find out velocity, fine. So delta X is M delta V square is equals to H by What is the option here then? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, can do it easily. Answer is option D here. Calculate the wavelength of a track. Track star running. 150 meter dash in 12.1 second if the weight is this. So what do we do here? Again, we use the same formula, 68th one. Oh yeah, this two will come out option B, correct? Yeah, it's option B. Yeah, yeah, it's B, same thing. So 68 is what lambda we need to write down, H by MV. Again, same formula, you can substitute all the values here and find out lambda. Okay, answer for this one is 68th one, what is the answer you are getting? The answer given is option D. Is it D, 68th one? 
68th one, what is the answer you got? D, okay. D as in Delhi. Okay. Yeah. The last one, question number 69. The uncertainty in locating of circulating electron is equal to its de Broglie wavelength. Okay. So in the question it is given delta x equals to lambda equals to h by mv given in the question. Right. The minimum percentage error in its measurement of velocity under this circumstances with approximately. So what is the question? We need to find out percentage error means delta V by V into 100 is equals to what? This is what the question we have. Okay, so delta V by V could we write down this as could we write down this as delta P by P into 100. Same thing, uncertainty in position is equals to, sorry, uncertainty in velocity is equals to the uncertainty in momentum. We can write this, okay. So we have the relation, into delta P is equals to H by MB What can we do after this? We need to find out delta P by P into 100. So we need to have this expression, right? Oh, one um, correction here. H by 4 pi, right? H by 4 pi, fine. So this delta X we can write H by P. MV is nothing but P. So delta X is H by P into delta p is equals to h by 4 pi h and h gets cancelled so delta p by p is equals to 1 by 4 into 22 into 7 and since percentage error we need to find out so into 100 into 100 now this would be 88 100 by 88 is one point something so you will get around eight approximately. Right? So one around eight, approximately eight you will get. Yeah, that's the option we have here. So approximately eight is the percentage error here we have. Clear? No doubt in this? Okay. In this, you don't have to solve all because there are a lot of calculations in this. So I want you to solve, first of all, 47 and 48. 47 and 48. It is not J level. There's a basic level question we have. You can have it in, uh, you know, um, J mains, you can say. Sometimes they ask in J mains. 
but on these topics you will have this kind of question only okay because only one thing is there that is what you need to apply but for uh, for j advanced level i'll share the pdf with you after the session Done. Okay. Question number forty-seven. Yeah, that's right. Which transition in the hydrogen spectrum? have the same wavelength as balmer transition in this of h e plus okay so for h e plus we can write 1 by lambda is equals to r z square divided by into 1 by from n 4 to 2 so nf square minus 1 by ni square so nf is 2 and z value is what z value is 2 here because it is helium so r into 2 square 1 by 2 square minus 1 by 4 square So when you solve this, what is the value you are getting here in terms of R? Could you tell me? Is it four? Is it three R by four? Okay, three R or four. So one by lambda is this. Now you see for the same same wavelength. Okay, so for H E plus, sorry, for hydrogen. what we can write 1 by lambda is equals to r 1 square right so this is 3r by 4 so what we are getting on the left hand side we are getting 3 by 4 1 by nf square minus 1 by and i square okay just you need to check with the option which option gives you this okay so i think nf is 1 uh, and 2 4 and 3 yeah i think option a is the correct one here after this you can put these values and check option a is correct for the 47th one okay 48th one how do we do 48th one the number of spectral lines can be possible when electrons in the sixth shell in hydrogen atom return to the second shell so ni is 6 sorry ni is 6 minus 2 6 minus 2 plus 1 divided by 3 is it 15 oh stand no four by two it is two into five ten we get ten right okay answer is option d for this one. all these things you knew you see here it's difficult to understand those concept if you see each and everything how we are getting no uh, the concept and the formula here little bit difficult to understand but as far as the question is concerned 
they ask very direct question in the exam i'm again telling you it is not for j advanced but for j mains you can expect this kind of questions okay in other exams okay now could you solve this um, 51 and 52 51 and 52 Wave number is one by lambda, Ansh. I have done this. You check your notes. New wave one new bar is one by lambda. Wave number is the number of wave produced per unit distance. Done. That's not right, Shudis, I guess. Check your calculation. No, it's not. Okay, I'll do this. Wait. Yeah, that is correct, Shitis. B is correct. 51, 51st one is B. B as in Bangalore. The wave number of a spectral line is this. So what is given? 1 by lambda is wave number is given. That is 5 into 10 to the power 5 meter inverse. You see, if you do not know this, suppose if you forgot what is wave number, the unit gives you the information. It is meter inverse, right? So it must be 1 by lambda. So unit always plays a very key role in these multiple choice questions. The energy corresponding to this line, easy. E is equals to what? H, C by lambda. 1 by lambda is given. All value substitute 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power minus 34. 3 into 10 to the power 8 divided by 5 into 10 to the power 5. Okay, so 1.3 approx. So 4 into 10 to the power 31 approximately. So 3.39. So 51.
Oh yes, correct. Because we are one by lambda, right? That's why I was thinking. I was not getting the answer. So five into ten to the power of five. Okay. So this this approximation you can take six point six. Always keep that in mind. So five into three is fifteen, or this into this is thirty three point something, right? Three point three. Three point three into three nine point three. Eight into eight plus five is thirteen by this. So we'll be getting C nine point something. So option B, we are getting nine point nine three into ten to the minus twenty three kilo joule. For this one, the answer is B. Fifty two. What is the answer? If the wavelength of first line of Baumann series, what is the first line? What do you mean by this first line? Bama series. Could you tell me what is the value of NF? NF value is two, right? NI value is what? It could be anything from three to infinity. But since it is first line, it means NI value is three, just above it, the lowest possible value, right? So when you solve this, we'll get one by lambda. Is equals to R of hydrogen. So one is square, one by four minus one by nine. So lambda is equals to thirty six by four R. Okay, so R is equals to four into lambda. Lambda is given; it's it is in nanometer. So let it be. You can keep this in nanometer also. In last, you can change because the answer is given in nanometer only. So I'll write down this as as it is: four lambda by thirty six. This R will substitute in the other equation, which is. Second line of this series, so one by lambda nu is equals to r one square one by n f is four, and this one is sixteen. Just you need to solve this, substitute the value of r, and you'll get the wavelength. The answer given is option C. That is four eighty six nanometer. Answer given for this one is C. Okay, so here you see the R value that I have given you one zero nine six seven eight. This value you don't have to memorize at all. You have to write down in terms of R only. Like in this question, you see. The lambda is given, so we'll find out R in terms of lambda, and then we, then we can substitute it here, and we'll get the answer. Option C is correct. Okay, fine. Did you get it? Fine, guys. So we'll start from this next class. Okay. So we have covered seventy percent of the portion. Fine. I'll share the assignment uh, PDF with you on the group. You can try that. Shalini. Can you hear me? Are you there? Oh, sorry, Sanjana. Are you there in the group, Sanjana? WhatsApp group. You have recently joined. Today only you have joined. Okay, so you don't have the other uh, videos, right? So what you do, you just ping me. Okay, I'm there in the. Okay, you can ping me. I'll send you the videos, the two three videos that we have done on this chapter separately. I'll send you personally. You can you know uh, finish those videos so that you'll have an idea that what is going on. Okay, in case of any doubt, you can get in touch with me anytime. Okay, guys, thank you. Bye. Take care.